Hey y'all, thanks for checking in. Euclid Mining. Today we are going to be breaking down a S17 plus 73 terahash Bitmain ASIC miner. That's an application specific integrated circuit. These machines are purpose built for doing one thing and one algorithm. Uh, this one here is the SHA-256. It goes after mainly uh, Bitcoin. There are other coins and things you can do with this, but Bitcoin is the most profitable, so this is what you would do with it. So let's get into this one. This is the one I bought, like, again, from Alibaba that I had problems with at the end of the video. I will give my rant about that, but you'll be able to watch the video and just skip that section if you don't want to hear me bitch and complain. So, uh, you know, real quick, you know, most of you know that I've seen my other videos. I am in this space by myself. None of my friends, none of my family, nobody that I know in general is even remotely interested in this. So everything I do, I do on my own and I learn on my own. So it's been a struggle. It's been an uphill battle from day one um, with having nobody to even talk to about things like this. But I've got um, several GPU miners going. I've got a couple ASICs going and I have learned so much um, along the way. This has been a crazy ride, I got to tell you. So uh, right now, we're over here, we're at the um, uh, uh, ASIC miner value page. This is a pretty good website, gives you a reasonable estimate. Um, if you go to different websites, they all give different numbers. Some of them are lined up, some of them aren't. So you just kind of have to ballpark it and get an idea of what it's doing. Uh, this one here, $555. Now, I know that two of the boards in here are completely damaged beyond repair, and there's one that does work. Uh, it does need minor repairs, but it, it will work. Uh, so only a third of this machine would work. So uh, let's see, a third of 555 is $185. Um, so even if I had just one board working, it would still produce about $185 a month. So um, I'll decide after I have that board working if I want to sell this machine and somebody else can find more boards or maybe I'll just plug it in and, you know, uh, make the money from this one so um it's a, such a big machine to run just one board so it'd be kind of silly but money is money so let's hop over here so you can see this a little better there we are so first we're going to do is that uh tell you a little about the machine so it's got four fans two in the front two in the back the ones in the back pull the air in and then the ones in the front are sucking and blowing them out so the air is always traveling and being pulled through the machine cooling the cards inside there's three cards in here uh, i'd already unscrewed the top um, actually i hadn't when i was at the repair shop they had done that and i just said stick it on top i'll take care of it later so anyway there would be um uh, four screws holding this in one two and then three and four in the back once you get that off you can see below is uh, the control board back here this is where you plug the ethernet in it gives you your lights telling you if you have an error or if it's running uh, normally your reset button it's got a spot for the um, uh, sd card if you want to flash it uh, locally otherwise you do it on the software uh, through your web interface so what we're going to do is we are going to uh, first we would unplug the boards so we unplug these ribbons there's three of them uh, they're still unplugged from when they were at the uh, technician uh, I told them just not even to bother. What's the point? So there's three of these right here. One, two, three. They plug into the board. So we undid them. Then also uh, we have this uh, housing. Uh, this is where the power is underneath here, how the power gets to the boards. There was one screw here. I undid that one as well. And this just pops right off just with the one screw. And under here now what we have is uh, these metal bars. Now there's three screws and three screws, and then there's two screws and two screws. There's a few screws missing because, again, they threw all the screws in a bag, and I just took them, and, and I said, just, you know, put a couple screws. Mm, excuse me. Burping. I had a big lunch. I had a little uh, Ethelman's uh, apple pie for dessert. It's delicious. Uh, so I had them put a couple screws in here and uh, just to hold it in place. But typically, they'd be one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then two screws here and two here so this is the power supply and these two bars uh, go into the power supply and then they bring power out and that's what powers these three boards here uh, the data that they process with is pulled on these ribbons and brought to the control board and the control board 
obviously it moves on from there to the internet and so on and so forth so I'm just going to go ahead and pop these screws off real quick and uh, I will show you how this comes apart so a lot of you know my videos are a little long-winded uh, because a I'm not very good at editing my videos yet and B everybody edits their videos to a point where it's so cut that you don't even see half the things that are going on so I want you to see everything uh, if you want to fast forward through me unscrewing a couple screws you know knock yourself out otherwise I got one more to go and we'll be done all right so there's some screws so there's these plates in here so they simply just come off and that's what they look like and there is one more so they go down like that across the board uh, these go on the power supply and that brings the power out to the boards themselves so that's these we'll go ahead and put those down there for now so now that we've got that done and that done what we have to do is we have to take off now the boards are, are loose and they're unsecure so they can be taken out so we have to take the panel off two ways one i could go ahead and take the fans off and remove them and then unscrew this metal plate and take that off if i want i can leave the fans attached and just remove this metal plate it would be the same thing um, i'm going to go ahead and just undo the screw now again there was several screws one two three four five six uh, that hold this panel on uh, i had them just screw one screw on it does clip on the bottom and then it screws on for extra uh, security uh, it's clipped on, but I only have one screw. So again, I'm going to just do a one screw thing here and get this one off. And then this should simply come back. Now what you want to do is we're going to go ahead and just lift this up a little bit. And that just unclips. And as you can see, it's got some clips here and here. And they just uh, lock into these two holes down here. So anyway, that's what it looks like. And that's just the fans again you can take them off to make this a little lighter and maybe easier for you um, it's all fine with this way i believe sorry if there's a lot of noise um, i got my microphone right here so i'm sliding this thing around so anyway this is it this is the the miner i'm going to grab the camera and bring you down here to show you a little closer of the inside you know of what this looks like so these are the boards so you have uh, your first row and your second row on this one board and then you have a board here you have a small thin row and again the wide ones and then here you have the board with a thin row and the wide row so three boards that make the s uh, 17 work so we're going to go ahead and bring you back up top and do that a little bit all right, I think you're pretty good. So now we're going to take these boards out. Um, I will say when you take these out, you want to be careful because these heat sinks are on by a little bit of cement slash glue. And if you bump them, they'll pop off. Now, you can repair that. It's not the end of the world. But I've never done it. I haven't gotten that far into ASICs. And I got to tell you the truth. I want to learn. I have learned so much about GPUs and ASIC miners and, you know, uh, you know crypto in general um, I am just so lucky to have been able the opportunity to learn as what as much as I have and doing things like this I think helps everybody so uh, or if you're just curious so without waiting any longer we will just go ahead and slide a board out as you can see I'll show you inside how they're in there um, comes out just like that and you have a board now this is one that I bought that had problems. Obviously one of the heat sinks had come off there in the middle and one down on this side as well. Um, I'm gonna put that down there. And I think I have a little heat sink over here uh, for the small one that popped off. Uh, the bigger ones are in a bag, but that's it, you know? It's just a little piece of aluminum and it just gets glued on top of the chip so it sits in there like that you know um, 
it sits in there a little straighter than that, but you get the point. But that's basically it. They're just little aluminum, you know, heat sinks. So uh, that's that. So these are missing a couple on this one. And on the other side of the board uh, is the small row that I showed you while it was inside, the small row and the big row. So this side uh, has all of its heat sinks on it. So um, I believe this is the board that is repairable. Um, just has minor work to be done. Probably cost a uh, hundred bucks. I think they quoted me to fix this one. So not too bad. And if this one works, like I said, uh, 185 bucks a month, uh, cost me a hundred bucks to fix it. So yeah, my ROI on this machine will be a lot longer because it'll be only running with one board rather than three. And like I said, making $555 a month down to, uh, 185, but you know, 185 bucks a month is still 185 bucks. Let's slide this one out. And here we are again, the board uh, missing a, a chip here and one here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit better. I don't know if the lighting is that well or if that's focused enough, but that's what it looks like. There's a little chip inside there um, and then the heat sink on top. And then again, when it's in there like this and the air is blowing through, it's cooling these chips as it passes. And that's about it. So that is board number two. Uh, everything seems to be good on this side. No real problems there. Um, again, I forget which boards are the ones that are damaged. So we will take a look at this one. And... You can see all the heat sinks are on this board. Um, as a matter of fact, I think this is the working board. I believe that's the working one. I will show you the top also. That's where those screws went in on top, that, those metal bars. And that's where the ribbons connect into the top, just so you can see that as well. So that is the inside. And we're going to put that just like that. And then I'm going to show you just the inside of this thing. There's nothing else, you know, really to do. Um, the other side is the fans. So the only thing that's inside of this box are these three cards. And, um, and like I said, the, the bars that go across to give power, the ribbons that connect to do the computing, and the control board on top, power supply, fans, money. It's kind of crazy, right? I mean, it's not kind of crazy. I think it is really crazy. Um, these machines are so profitable. I'm going to see if I could find that board that has the burns on it. Yeah, I think this is it here. Yeah, this one's it. This is the one that has the burns on it. Uh, I'm going to show you this one a little closer. Now, it's funny because uh, I promised I wouldn't rant until the end, but I'm going to give you a quick little one here and show you this. This is the burnt out board, so I'm going to bring the camera down here so it's a little more stable. Um, let's see if I can get in on this here. I don't know. Yeah, I really can't see it. I don't think the, the light is going to give this justice. Um, Let's see. Maybe I can. Yeah. I think it's a little too dark. Oh, there you go. You can see them there now, I think. You can see in that corner right there. You can see down below how burnt out that is. Oh, well, anyway. Uh, I don't want you to go blind watching me try to find burn holes. So, um, that's basically it. I mean, that's it in a nutshell, you know. Um, not much to it. Not much, you know, as far as it goes, you think, wow, not many moving parts or any moving parts except for the fans. You'd think that this might be something great but uh, this one here did not come in well so 
Anyway, I'm going to uh, take this off the desk and we'll wrap this up with my rant about Alibaba <laughs> and tell you a little bit more about my experience. And like I said, the next video I'm going to do is going to be a, uh, a recap of where I'm at with Alibaba because uh, previous videos I had, I had spoken about that. So now we're going to get into a little bit more on this next one. So people better understand what they're up against when they buy through Alibaba. It's not a joke. It's um, uh, thieves and liars, uh, cheats and stealers, right? Um, okay, I'm going to stop. Thanks for watching. Look, do me a favor. Hit the uh, subscribe button, thumbs up. Leave some comments. Let me know if you've dealt with Alibaba. T talk to me about it. Let me know where you are with Alibaba. Have you had any positive experiences? Have you had negative experiences? Have you applied for a refund and, and did you get it? Um, you know, because if you did, you probably should buy a lottery ticket because you'd have to be the luckiest uh, person on the planet. But, uh, you know, tell me about your experience. Let me know more. Again, you know, uh, I'd love to hear from any of you. Uh, about some tips or tricks or anything you're doing to have more success because some days I don't and uh, it's a it's a tough battle so thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time